the Environmental Education Specialist at the Franklin Soil and Water Conservation District. We are now standing inside the soil tunnel. Um, so this is a demonstration of the world underground. And we are going to start here with the storm drain and then work our way under, underground. But here we have a car on the roadway. If you have a good imagination, it's, this is a car right here. Now, it is only part of a car. Um, you can see one tire here, the other tire is kind of off the page. Um, but it is a red car and it's driving away from us. And you have the old bumper and the bumper sticker. You need to keep this um, in mind forever. Don't treat your soil like dirt. We'll talk about it. Underneath the tire, we do have the roadway. So we have um, blacktop on top of concrete, on top of gravel, on top of soil. We build the roads in layers like that to make them stronger so we don't fall through the road as we're driving down the highway. That'd be a problem. Next to the car on the roadway, we do see this metal thing with the ball floating in it. This is called a storm drain. Sometimes we call them storm sewers. This is a direct connection to a creek, river, lake, or pond. So anything that goes in the storm drain along the side of the road ends up in our creeks, rivers, lakes, and ponds. So think about all the things that we have on our roadways, driveways, sidewalks, parking lots at home. There could be litter and trash. There could be um, soap suds for washing, from washing your car. There could be oil and gas that might leak. There might be presents from walking your dog. All of those things with a heavy rain um, can wash into that storm drain and go directly to our creeks and rivers. This is a huge source of water pollution that we have. So we need to remember only rain should go down the drain. And that's super, super important. So you can see that we have a lot of dirt coming in right here and a lot of dirt down here at the bottom of the river. Notice I called that dirt and not soil. This I'm calling soil up here, but this I'm calling dirt. I'm going to say the difference is about location. Soil is that fantastic stuff that's growing our plants. It's where it's supposed to be. It's doing a wonderful thing. It's a great resource. Dirt is where it's not supposed to be. It's no longer being helpful. Actually, it's kind of being harmful. It's in the way it's not being useful at all. So this is our dirt down here. Now, I'm not going to blame all of that dirt on the storm drain because some of this dirt is coming from right here. You'll notice we have a huge stream bank here. And whenever it rains really hard, that water washes in there, grabs the soil and brings it into the river. Now, soil is heavier than water, and after a while, it's going to sink to the bottom, and we have all that dirt in the bottom of the river. That's one of our worst pollution problems in Ohio's rivers. All that dirt and sediment down there causes real problems for the animals to be able to see and to breathe and to find their food. The cause of that is called erosion. Erosion is whenever soil is moved by wind, water, or ice. So in this case, that water, when it rains, is washing across that stream bank, picking up that soil and turning it into dirt as it drops it at the bottom of the river. You'll notice we don't have that problem over here on this side. So on this stream bank, we have a little skinny stream bank and no big pile of dirt over here. That's because of the types of trees that are there. Over here, we have these great long tree roots coming down. We have other trees and horsetails and bushes here. These are great tall plants with really long root systems. Those roots are fantastic for tying or holding that soil in place. Now over here, we have lovely trees and bushes, but they're back further. Along the edge, all we have is grass. And I'm sure you've probably pulled grass out of the ground before. Grass is a fantastic plant, but its roots are really short, so it can only hold the top part of the soil in place. It can't hold it in down deeper, so we have the erosion happening over here that we don't have over here. This is changing our soil into dirt where we don't need it to be. So far, we have talked about the soil above ground. I promised you we're five feet underground, and I want to take a look at that world underground. If you'll notice here, we have the soil underneath by happy clams here. Um, you should notice it's pretty smooth. It's kind of a light or dullish color. It's underneath the river. Compare this soil to the one over here in the woods underneath my mushrooms. You'll notice it's a little bit darker in color, um, a little bit more clumpy, maybe. Um, you should not be able to notice some differences. That's because of the soil types and it's because of the location. So here we have water kind of trickling or slowing, uh, slowly moving through here all the time. It is at the base of a river. As that water slowly moves through here, it's doing a couple of things. One, smoothing the soil out. If 
you pick up a rock that's been in the river any period of time, it always has rounded edges, right? It smooths things out. The second one is that color change we notice. Over a long period of time, that water will take the color out of the soil. Just think about your blue jeans. If you have a brand new pair of jeans and you wash them and wear them and wash them and wear them and wash them and wear them, over time, the dark blue dye washes out of the jeans and they're a lighter color. Same thing is happening here where the brighter colors, the minerals and nutrients are being washed out of that soil and leaving it this kind of a lighter, duller color. Over here, we have all the great nutrients still being added to the soil. It's a little bit drier, it's a little bit um, grainier, a little bit clumpier, um, and that's a good soil to help our plants to grow. This is gonna be a richer soil um, than we have over here. So you will notice we have two different trees here growing in those two different soil types. So we have this tree over here growing in kind of a wet soil conditions that we talked about. Um, this tree growing over here where it's a little bit drier, more kind of clumpy. Think about what the trees need in order to survive and think about those, what those roots are doing for the trees. Roots are super important for soaking up the water that the tree needs in order to live, but they're also holding that tree in place. So we have these two trees growing in the two different soil conditions, dealing with different situations. This one has no trouble finding water. There's water there because it's in a nice wet soil underneath the river, plenty of water available for this tree. But this is kind of mushy, squishy soil. That's not gonna hold the weight quite as well. So this tree is kind of balancing in that squishy soil. Think about being on a balance beam. You put your arms up to the sides to give you more balance or support. These roots are growing sideways to kind of grab on for dear life to help hold this tree up in that pretty wet conditions. Now you'll notice over here where he's growing in the dry soil, those roots are growing down to get to water, just like this guy. So wherever there's drier soils and there's not as much water, the roots are growing down to find that water, but the soil is much stronger over here. Think about dry, walking on dry ground, you go right across the top, whereas in the squishy soil, you slip and slide a little bit. Um, this is gonna help protect or hold the weight of those trees just fine. Now they're searching for that water. The water's down deeper and we know where it is because of these funny gray streets. I say they look an awful lot like upside down lightning. Those are places where the water has sat for so long that it's bleached or taken the so a color completely out of the soil. These are those places where the water has sat there. Every time it rains, it comes down, comes down and finds those cracks. Color-wise, think about your blue jeans, the knees, right? If you have jeans that you've had for a period of time, the knees are usually the lightest part of the jeans. That's because we sit crisscross a lot. It's because we stand up and sit down a million times a day. We put a lot of stress on the knees of our blue jeans. You can feel the pressure of your leg against the fabric when you move that pressure takes more color out of the fabric. It takes more fabric out of the fabric, right? That's why we wear new through our jeans first, the knees. Same thing is happening here. Every time it rains, that water sits there and sits there and sits there, pulling more color out. And if you draw a line across the top of those gray streaks, that tells you where the water table is. The water table is the layer or level underground where there's always a constant supply of water. That is super important if you need to dig a well, for example, or have a constant supply of water for something. Here, it looks relatively high. Sometimes it's really, really deep. It just depends on the soil type. So as you look at the soil, um, looking down, you'll notice that there's a color change as you go deeper in the soil. That's because of the layers of the soil and what the soil is made out of. This top layer of soil we magically call topsoil. I love it when science words make sense. And it's the darkest color because it has all the nutrients. Think of all the leaves falling off the trees. If you know um, someone who composts or you compost at home, all that um, food scraps and things like that that you can put, kitchen food scraps that you can put in a compost pile. All those things are adding nutrients to the soil as that decomposes or rots. Color-wise, think about a banana peel that's been around a little too long gets that black and slimy color and texture. That's what you're looking at in a good, healthy, rich topsoil. So the darker the soil is, the richer it is or the better it is for the plants to grow. That material is called humus, not hummus. That's the stuff we eat, right? Humus is the dead and decaying plant material. We also refer to it as organic matter. Organic is a fancy word for things that are living, used to be living or come from living things. That's our lovely layer of topsoil. Underneath it, we have this lighter layer of soil 
Um, still relatively good, you know, still relatively smooth and things like that, but not quite as rich. This is your subsoil. The roots can still grow through it. The plants want to start up in that lovely, healthy topsoil. So we have that layer of subsoil underneath it. And then underneath that, we start to see those gray streaks we talked about. You start to see it's a little bit clumpy, or you may see some pieces of rocks in this layer here. This is called the parent material layer. The parent material layer are pieces and parts of rocks that weather, that hit next to each other, break apart into smaller pieces. That weathering rock in here is forming some of our soil, which is why we call those the parent rocks. Those parent rocks come from that bottom layer of soil down here. That's called the bedrock. It's the bottom rock. It's done as far as you can dig. You hit rock bottom. That's the support system for all the soil, just like your bed supports you at home. So that's the bedrock at the bottom. You have the um, parent material on top of that, the subsoil above that, and the topsoil magically on top. Again, the colors you'll notice a little bit different as you go deeper in the soil. If you look at that bedrock, you may notice some things in it. In our bedrock here, we have some fossils, prints or pictures of plants or animals that lived a long, long, long time ago. We have a lot of limestone bedrock in this part of Ohio. That limestone bedrock is known for having a lot of fossils in it, especially ocean animals, um, as we used to be covered by a shallow sea a long, 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 long time ago. Now, the parts of the soil, the ingredients of the soil, those rocks and minerals that I said weathered to break into the soil, that's 45%. 5% is that organic matter. It's only 5% because it's only in that top layer of soil. It's a really important 5%. The other two ingredients are also super important and they're water and air. So all of our soil is made out of 25% water, 25% air, 45% rocks and minerals, and 5% organic matter. That makes a good, healthy soil. It doesn't mean all soil is the same. We do have three major soil types. The differences are the texture or the feel of the soil. And that difference is because of the size of the grains how finely or coarsely those rocks broke apart. Our three major soil types are called sand, silt, and clay. Sand is the grainy one. If you're rubbing it between your fingers, it feels a lot like, um, like salt or sugar. You can feel the grains. The middle one is called silt. Um, if it's got some water in it, it feels a lot like, say, cookie dough. It's kind of squishy or mushy, right? Then one that's really, really sticky when it's wet or like powder when it's dry, that's a clay soil. They're different because of the size of the grains. Though we talk a lot about a tiny grain of sand, in the dirt world, sand is the largest particle size. Think about making a sand castle on the beach. If you make a great sand castle, it's wonderful, and then it rains that sandcastle falls apart because the grains are so big, they can't press tightly together. The water goes in between the grains and bumps them out of the way and ruins your sandcastle. Now, if you think of making something out of um, clay in art class, for example, you've made a fantastic clay project and somebody accidentally pours water on it, it's not going to fall apart like your sandcastle did. It might get a little bit sticky or squishy. Um, but the clay grains are so small that they're packed really tightly together, so water goes through it really, really slowly. You can tell your soil type by that texture I mentioned, also by watching to see what happens when it rains. If you look outside on a rainy day and you notice that some of the water is soaking right down into the soil and you don't have any mud puddles or anything like that, then you probably have a good silty, loamy soil. Loam means a really good mix. We don't have a lot of sand here, so I'm gonna say it's probably a, a silty soil if you have um, the water going through pretty well. If the water hits the ground, forms a mud puddle, stays there for a while, and then soaks down into the ground, you probably have a lot of clay content in your soil because that clay is gonna hold that water on top for a longer period of time. That's important to know. Different types of soil are good for different types of things. If you wanna build a sand castle, go to the beach, right? Get some sand in a sandbox, something like that. If you want a garden, I would get a good um, silty soil or that loam I mentioned, that mix of sand, salt, and clay with the organic material and everything. If you want to have a pond, you need to have a good clay soil. That clay liner is going to hold the water in place and make a fantastic pond. So different types of soil are good for different things. Otherwise, it's awful hard to build a garden, for example, in a clay soil um, or a pond in a sandy soil and things like that. You've got to have the right soil for the right mix. 
Soil, remember, is super important. Without a good, healthy soil, we can't grow plants. Without plants, we have no food or oxygen. It's kind of a big deal. So remember, don't treat your soil like dirt. Soil is that fantastic stuff that we depend on for everything. Um, it's a great building block of life. Dirt is the stuff we just kick around and really is out of place and causing a problem.